hello, welcome to DIY is my happy place. I'm Amy and I have a question for you. Have you ever been walking in a store and see one little thing and then get inspiration for a new craft? This is a scarf I found at the Dollar Tree. And when I looked at that scarf, I was thinking to myself, pigtails, of course, for a gnome. Anyone can see that that needs to be pigtails. And that's where the inspiration for this gnome came. So let's have some fun. This gnome is one that came to me in a dream. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how to make embellishments, how to do flip-flop feet, and how to do pigtails using Dollar Tree supplies. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the feet using some dough and some fixident. You can either use dough or putty. Either one works, but you definitely want to use fixident so that it'll harden up really nicely. The dough will dry, but it will kind of crack if you don't. And the Play-Doh, well, that putty just never really dries. So you definitely want to use some fixident. Now, I keep Crisco handy because sometimes it does start to dry out when you get enough fixident in there that it'll really harden up. So you just kind of play in with it. So first of all, we're gonna form the feet and cut the toes with an X-Acto knife. Then you just bend the toe forward and round it out and go along and do each toe just like that, molding your foot. And this is a lot easier than you might think, really. And we're gonna do a different technique in order to get the toenails to show up. And you could do this really in any color. I'm doing it in a yellow color because that's what I have a lot of dough of. See how that foot looks? So cute. Now, in order to, let's go ahead and mix up another one. Now, in order to put the toenails, what we're gonna do is use a straw on the big toe and then one of those coffee stirring straws for the little toes. And you just go along and even though they're circular, it looks completely good for the toes. So just, just poke it enough that it makes an indention. Look at that foot, isn't that great? <laughs> okay, so after you get the feet made, I use the four yard balloon sticks. There are two different types of balloon sticks at the Dollar Tree and you definitely want the ones that come four in a package, they're a little bit bigger. And the reason why I use balloon sticks, two reasons. One, I can just cut them with a, four, with a pair of scissors. And secondly, they come with these little tiny attachments so that I can hook on the feet one day and then put, the, put them, attach them to the legs later on. So we're gonna put a little bit more of this dough. It's like Play-Doh, but it's Dollar Tree's version and it's just called dough. <laughs> and again, this has four different times that I've mixed some fixident in it. Dollar Tree does have fixident, but if you want the really hardening kind, the extra hard kind that I picked up from Walmart. And I will put links below just so that you know what it is we're using. And the reason I like to use the clay is that it's such vibrant colors that come with it. So you can mix it up and this too, you need four times you put in some of that powder and just knead it around, knead it around, and then it works perfect for making embellishments. And sometimes it gets a little bit dry, as I said before. Now, I use the lid of the Fix-A-Dent in order to add some little bit of markings along for the flip-flop. You want it to have a bit of a tread, and so that's what I did to make a tread. You could use anything. That's what I love to do is just grab any objects that you can find in order to give it a little bit of a pattern. And then I put my foot on it and then trim around with the X-Acto knife so that the flip-flop fits perfectly with the foot size. So it's just a little bit bigger than the foot size. Now I did mine rather thin because I knew once these hardened up, they're gonna be pretty sturdy. And I'm really making this particular gnome very lightweight. So 
Now we're gonna fix the flip-flop part, the straps that go on the top. So just roll those out like a snake and then form them around and put them inside the flip-flop after we get it all cut and put into the right size. And that's all it takes to get a flip-flop. I literally woke up one morning. <laughs> well, I woke up in the middle of the night and I was thinking, oh, wouldn't a gnome with pigtails and flip-flops be so cute? So I just played around with it and played around with it till I came up with a way. And again, I always try to see if I can do it. I'd like to try to accomplish it by using things that I pick up from the Dollar Tree. Now you could use molding clay and I'll put a link below of the molding clay that you can order from Amazon. And that's really nice to use and it works great and it dries without having to add fix it in. It'll dry nice and hard. But if you want to get it from the Dollar Tree, I'm going to put those links too. And then for those little tiny toenails, we're going to uh, put some fingernail polish and you can use any color that you want. I actually like to put a little dot on a piece of paper so that I have, can really regulate how much the fingernail polish is going to be on there. And then this is the thing, after it dries, and it needs about 12 hours to dry really hard, go ahead and take some super glue, and it's the one in the red tube from the Dollar Tree, and generously put that all over, especially the straps, and certainly anywhere where it connects so it doesn't start to separate. You want it to be very strong right there. And I have it on just a little piece of trash, <laughs> you know, plastic that came from maybe some cookies or something so that the super glue can drip off on the edges and really reinforce and support. Now, anybody who follows me knows I love the Crafter Square border stickers. They come in all different types of colors and designs and I use them so much. In fact, this one's almost gone. There were like two flower circles left and I will use every bead, every gem. And I love them because they have stickers on the other side. So what I'm making with this one is I'm just gonna push that little sticker right onto some dough that I have left over, and I'll make a cute necklace pendant out of it. And while I'm at it, everybody knows you're gonna wanna have a matching purse. You can see off to the side, I did purple on my first one, and this one is going to be orange and I love the brightness of it. And I just folded it over and kind of made a bit of a pillow on one end so it looks like a very fancy purse. So just pinch the edges a little bit. And then I rolled just the tiniest little snake, made a circle and then pushed it on the top and added one last little beaded gem. Now I have these little beads so it'll look like a buckle. And you have to kind of push that down with a paper clip or a, the very tip of a pen or something, possibly if you can't get it to fall right into place. Now, I have a paper clip that I unfolded and I wanna size it to make sure it's the right size and then just add some more of my beads. Now, a lot of those beads at the Dollar Tree are either really tiny or really big. So I will put a link for this type of beads I just order them off Amazon and it's kind of worth it. They're just the perfect size. They're not too small, not too big. And then I'll put that on my purse for the, for the handle. And after it's completely dried, I'll add super glue to reinforce it. And then since I still have some dough that's all ready with some fixidant, I'll just make some cute little flowers that can be used for embellishment, possibly in her hair or on her dress or wherever I might decide. I just always like to have extra embellishments that match up with what I'm doing. And again, you know, I use up every single little tiny bead. And there's my flower. And all of that made with these two little items. So fun. Okay, now I've got the body of my gnome already pre-made and I will put a link below for how to make bendable arms and how I do the standing legs in a different link. I don't want to re-show what I've already shown before, so I will put a link for the other video. This belt is actually from an Easter basket, a fabric Easter basket. This is the reason why I came up with this. 
was this scarf. I saw this scarf hanging in the Dollar Tree, and I thought, you know what? That would make the best ponytails for a gnome. And so I picked this scarf up, and just this was the inspiration. And it's funny how sometimes just one little thing that I see at Dollar Tree can become inspiration. And speaking of inspiration, when I was pulling off the ring that this scarf was hung on, I look at that ring and I think, you know what? That would make a perfect Weber grill. And so that's going to be my next one. I'm going to make a Weber grill out of that little plastic. Okay, so let's get to the gnome. Now I'm going to go ahead and do this really in fast motion. And if you need a slower version of this, again, I'm going to put a link below. I've shown this many times in different tutorials, so I don't want to be redundant of how I use a ping pong ball nose, plastic golf ball nose, whatever, to make the nose of my gnomes. Now, this is the first time I've ever done the hair the way that I'm going to do it now. I want it to actually have pigtails going off to the side. So I want to have a generous amount of glue all over the back of the head. And I will just glue very... Um, generously in order to get the entire scarf to just attach right down to my Mr. Potato Head sock gnome. And that's just literally a sock with some stuffing in it. And then I glue, glue, glue. The other thing when I visualized this scarf becoming hair was I thought it'd be really fun to have long bangs hanging over right up to the nose. And so that is what the look that I'm going for. Ponytails, bangs, flip-flops. Now I get my bendable arms and I'll glue those. Now usually they glue up on top of the head, but because I've got my hair glued on, it's going to be glued down a little bit farther. And that is all it takes to create this fun gnome. So I'm going to be very generous so that all the glue sticks. Now hands, I love using balls for the hand and I use my silicone makeup brush in order to really be precise on where I'm putting the hot glue. And then I got some Dollar Tree felt and I just glued some pieces over and over so it would look like a bit of a gathered skirt. And the gold on the bottom of the skirt I got from a sign that I used, it was like a 2019 happy graduation sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I just cut those pieces off, made it into a skirt. And now here's another bit of my stickers and border stickers. This one's pink. I'll cut off one flower. And because it's going to be going onto a bit of a slick surface, I will go ahead and use some hot glue to make sure that doesn't pop off. And that's going to be our little belt buckle. Isn't that fun? And now that I have a little left over from the skirt, I'll go ahead and give her a little bit of gold bands around her wrists. So that looks like the trim of her shirt has a gold embellishment. I just love to use up everything that I possibly can and I'll clip that together till it dries. She's coming together nicely. She just has a little tiny bit of stuffing in there. She's kind of a skinny gnome because that was the look I was going for and I wanted her to be very lightweight. Now I'll just finish gluing on the back of my felt skirt and the back of my belt. Now this fabric that I used for the belt came, like I said, it was from an Easter egg basket handle, a cloth one, and it wasn't long enough to be a belt. So I just cut it in strips and then taped up the backside knowing that when I glue it on, you'll never see that. But I loved it because it was pink and it has a glittery look to it. And I knew that it would match very well with a pink haired gnome. Okay, she's coming together. Now, in order to get her hair to stand up and really be a good pigtail, I'm going to use some pipe cleaners. And I'll just trim off a bit of her hair. Once I get her hair pipe cleaned, then I can give her a haircut so that her hair will poke out. Now I'm just gonna fluff this hair up a little bit, make sure there's no seams anywhere, and fluff it and fluff it, and she is just really starting to look cute. <laughs> oh, I just love it. It's so much fun to create new 
designs with the gnomes. Now you'll notice that since I don't have um, the big bulky part on the top, since the sock gnome was glued on at the bottom, I needed to bring her nose down farther than I would have, depending on if you're gonna have a big hat on top, then the nose might be higher up. So you just always try to think of the nose being, give, give it the space that it needs in order to have a head. Okay, now here's my little embellished necklace that I made. And again, the feet, the necklaces, all of those parts dried really pretty fast. Now I gotta get her bangs to just lock in. And this purse, I did use the super glue to dry the handle onto it. And now I just gotta put all my little embellishments, even the flower up in her hair. And she's starting to come together. It's just exactly what I was hoping for. Sometimes when I'm thinking about how I want my gnomes to look, I, the, to go from what I think it's gonna be like compared to what it actually is doesn't always work out. <laughs> so imagine my surprise when it actually worked and it just gives me so much pleasure. My niece, Kristen, actually was the one that gave me the idea. Wouldn't it be cute to have a gnome with bangs? So yeah, there's just a little bit of this and a little of that that gives me inspiration. Add them all together and hope for the best. So that's what we're coming up with. Now I can just, with those little attachments, and I have a whole video all about gnome shoes, gnome feet, and how to attach them. And you can find that link below to show how to do that. And her legs right now are, that's white duct tape actually. So I like to reinforce them because she, the shoes are quite fragile. Generally, you don't have to reinforce the legs at all if they have really strong shoes, which is what they usually have. But because these are flip-flops and little tiny feet, I'm gonna go ahead and reinforce those spots with some more glue. Plus, I don't want it to be able to see the seam there. And so if I have a gnome that has pant legs or a skirt that goes down, this one I wanted to be a mini skirt. So for all of those reasons, I'm gonna duct tape her legs and then I'll also glue on some white felt. So it just looks like she's wearing a bit of leggings to match her cute skirt and her white sock blouse. <laughs> okay, well, I sure am glad you're here with me. We're getting close. If you haven't already, please subscribe. I look at my analytics and 80% of you do not subscribe. So please subscribe, like, and share it out so that I can keep the content coming. Now, this is what she looks like all finished. Isn't she darling? I have to say that she has brought me so much happiness and joy and my granddaughters absolutely love her. So I will see you again soon. Thank you so much. This was really a fun day today. And if you would like to see more videos like this, click this one right here. Or this one right here. I'll see you on the other side.